Step 3 is for you to calculate the fold change. Fold change is used to answer the question, how much did my treatment affect the expression of the target protein? Say you're looking at the expression of XYZ protein in response to treatment with, let's say, curcumin. You will have an experimental sample that is treated with curcumin and a control sample without curcumin treatment. The normalized values are 2 and 1 respectively. A fold change value of 2 means there is a two-fold upregulation of XYZ protein in response to curcumin treatment. Values greater than 1 indicate an increase in relative abundance and values less than 1 indicate a decrease in relative protein abundance. And all of this is a function of the experimental treatment. For reporting fold change values between 0 and 1, take the reciprocal of the calculated fold change. For example, the experimental value is 2.5 and control value is 10. The fold change then would be 0.25. The reciprocal value of 0.25 would be represented as a four-fold decrease. Now that you have determined your fold change values, you still need more proof to support a potential claim of biological significance. How do you go about collecting that information? It's fairly simple. Quantitative Western blots benefit from replicates, both technical and biological. You should have done the first three steps on at least three sets of biological samples and three sets of technical replicates per biological sample. Ideally, you should end up with three blots that are a collection of biological and technical replicates. You will need to calculate the normalization factor for each blot, along with normalized signal values for each lane in each blot, and finally, the fold change for each blot. Once you have these values for all three blots, you can then begin to calculate the standard deviation and coefficient of variance for your data. You do this to arrive at meaningful conclusions from your data. Let's see how to calculate these values.